Good day. In this video, I want to explain what is my um, idea of what we can do with the youth mappers and how it will be helpful for the city. So what you're now looking at is many layers, which you can see here on the right side. We have here the big aerial imagery, we have here the high resolution imagery that's actually then Google, which is outdated and illegal to use, so I never use that. Um, I added it anyway to show the proof of concept. Um, these are the drone images. I'm getting more to that later on. Um, this is Street View recording uh, using Carta View. I will also explain a bit about that. Uh, Geotech images. This is basically field surveying, what youth mappers also can do. I do that through the city. And this is the actual data layer. So, this is the data on OpenStreetMap about Bagio. Um, let's start here, switch off everything and start here with the drones. Um, so the drones are georeference, and right now I did them georeferencing here to the Bing. So it all fits to Bing if you disable it. You can actually see these are all the drone images from Baggio. Um, as you all know, projecting all the drone images at once, uh, that, that, that's impossible. Um, it's more than 100 gigabyte of data. And if you were to load this on, on my laptop, it would, I don't know, it probably would not crash, it would just get stuck. There's no way you can put that much data on a laptop and visualize that. Everyone works with QGIS and drone images, works with that data, understands what I'm saying, that you cannot do this on the laptop. Um, yet it still works. Now, how, how did I manage that? By using a WMS server. Um, here is a virtual machine um, I set up. It's um, from Oracle and I used their Ubuntu installation where I installed a software package which is called GeoServer. And we can also show this, so it's simply an Ubuntu desktop what you got here, virtually. The beautiful thing of this system is we can set this up at the MITD. And if you do that, it will be hosted on a server, which is more than capable of hosting that, which my laptop is not. Um, right now I'm only using 8 GB of RAM, so you can see that here the system is 8 GB of RAM and 4 virtual processors, so the, the hardware requirements to do this, it's really, really minimal. Um, let's close this again. And then when you set it up like that, this is the result, you have all your drone images hosted at once. Um, to access that, this works also in QGIS, by the way, you just have to define that you use the WMS server. Um, the zooming level is between 2 and 22. And this is the reference to my local virtual machine. And this basically, you can copy this in ArcGIS, in QGIS, and it works. You just need to set up the server. The Geo server will host the tiles, and that's it. And then you get a view like this where you have all your drone images, georeference, stitched together, it's all there. You don't need to wait to load data, you don't need to load it on your local computer, you just reference it. Um, the thing is, when you zoom in, of course you need some bandwidth, which, again, my laptop is not meant to work as a server, so it's not that fast on my laptop, but as you see, it keeps updating the tiles, the, those black spots, it means it's updating that. It's still pretty fast, right? And um, as you can see, as you zoom in, it gets a bit more slow, but everything is responsive. This works again also in QGIS. Um, the thing with the youth mappers, let's switch on the layer. So this is right now the data on OpenStreetMap. And these footways here, you can see this is steps. This was mapped without using the drone imagery. It was using the satellite imagery. 
uh, from Bing because Google is illegal to use. And that's actually a thing I noticed in the offices. A lot of offices keep using Google. It's explicit illegal to use any Google server or service, I have to say, uh, to establish other maps for which you use the Google services. You can only use Google services if you also use Google Maps. So if you use city maps or generate city maps based by using Google services, that's actually not legal. Uh, I understood from engineering friends I have in Manila, in Manila they are also not doing that because it's illegal. Outside of Manila, LGUs are still doing that because there's no control. Outside of Manila, in Manila there is control. We may have to accept the fact that eventually control will also be expanded to other LGUs. And then we don't want to be relying on a system or a service from Google, which we are not allowed to use. Uh, the only reason where you can use Google is for specific cases, academic cases, but also the academic cases, they have to be very, very specific. If you use Google imagery or any Google service, um, of course, as long as it's internal, no one is going to know, right? The problem is, offices hand out to constituents in Baguio prints, sometimes using Google satellite imagery, and then they put an overlay of titled boundaries, how the title boundaries fit on the Google imagery and hand this out to constituents. Again, it's not legal because you're basically generating a new data map and with it you use Google services and you are not using it for what it's intended to be. There are very few exceptions where Google allows you to use it. So it's really better not to use Google satellite imagery anymore, not to use Google referencing anymore which is another thing, the stitching together of satellite imagery. How do you know the satellite is at the right location? How do you know that this point of the satellite imagery and this point, that the distance between them is correct, that both of them are at the right location? There is inaccuracy with that, of course, because if the satellite is here, the point directly below the satellite, that's easy to determine, but the distortion by both the atmospheric interference, but especially the moment you get a picture is never a single point, it's always a square, right? So when you go to the outer edges of the square, you already have to assume, based on elevation, the atmospheric interferences, etc., aberrations, the lens itself, nothing is 100%, it also distorts light in the lens so it hits on the photo cell at the wrong locations and then you have to georeference that and you have to stitch it all together the same as with the drone images everyone who made drone imagery and then stitch it together knows about this the thing is the algorithms to figure out which pixel belongs where and how to correct and georeference every single pixel on such a picture and then stitch it together and then you get the overlay around the world for the Google Earth uh, view, um, that's propriety of Google and no one is allowed to use that. Which means if you use Google imagery and then you reference anything to Google imagery, that's a serious violation of their terms and conditions. So hence my point, don't use Google. It's a bad idea. Yes, they have a nice imagery available online. And yes, you can use it, but it doesn't mean it's legal. The thing is to view it, that's legal. But to use it, then make your own data from that, stitching anything on it. But especially georeferencing the data from the assessor office, for example, these nice uh, tiled dots, and then stitching them on the Google imagery so it matches with the built houses and then you print that and then you give that to constituents then you are using this proprietary work from Google 
which they have for stitching together these pictures and that's very very illegal so stop doing that don't do that we need our own satellite imagery for which i'm working right now um, i'm in the process of procuring that through the university of the philippines they um, have something really really beautiful which is actually better than google namely they are in the process of getting very recent imagery from the worldview three satellites which is from um, Maxar and um, uh, actually it's not Maxar, it's below what's it? yeah, I'm bad with names, I forgot already it's globe something, but it belongs to Maxar they procured that in 2017, 2018 Somewhere like that, they, they procured that. So this satellite that belongs to the Maxar network, that's very high quality, and that's very recent what they're working on. And the idea is we can also host this on our geo server. So on the geo server, we can host then one layer is the satellite imagery once we get it from the university, and the next layer is then the drone imagery. Uh, I'm also in the process getting the drone imagery from the University of the Cordilleras and from the University of the Philippines. Both of them have drones, uh, drone imagery of Bagio. And I put that all together with the imagery we get from Sapmo and from the CEO. Put it all together and then you get here... Um, let's disable this because that layer takes a lot of processing power. Then you get something like this, it's called mosaicing. So there will be more coming together there from the drone imagery which we will get from the university. They are right now working on that to uh, get that ready for me, the data. Um, yeah, but let's, let's now go back here because all of that is interesting about the concept of hosting your own imagery and your own satellite data. But I'm here now for the new mappers which I want to show. Uh, for youth mappers, for example, this is beautiful. So how do we know where our steps, where our footways, where our roads, all of that, and especially also buildings, uh, with this data, if we provide this to the techno hubs for the youth mappers, they can literally use this and you can just say note, 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 and then you can see this is the roof, but this is an extension and you can pretty accurately add the extension here let's first make the square because this is the square of the house and then we add this additionally because I can see already this is not a perfect square and from here to here and here we make three points because there's a boundary for which we can use the control C. Oh, it doesn't work, the curve. Ah, oh, it's too small to create a curve, okay. Then we do it manually. If it's too small to do it automatically, we do it manually. We stitch that together, we stitch those two points here together, and combine all of that, and then we this is actually a nice thing with OpenStreetMap. You can actually map this here and say that's a relation. And then you say this is a building and this is a house. And this building, you can do the same. You select this. Um, you don't actually necessarily have to do that as a relation. You can also do it like this. And both is legit on OpenStreetMap, both works. Um, it's basically about rendering. Um, and here you can say this is whatever it is, an extension or a bungalow or maybe it's just a shed. This is also why we need Street View. I'm getting to that later. With Street View you actually see from a different perspective. Now we just look from the bottom. But let's say this is just a shed. And then you can also put this together again and you can make a new relation where you say, well, the whole is residential. And now you've got this properly mapped. 
you upload it here. The moment I click here, the whole world knows it. And this, and also I'm going to delete this now again because this is not the area I was working. This is the concept of what new mappers can do, but also here with the steps, um, you can actually fix these steps here. Um, for example, they start here. Let's say you could there, 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 and here is a flat area. Here the steps continue again. You should do here, here, and then it goes down. If you see a building like this, it's wrong, you just delete it. Or you move it, whatever you want. But this is just proof principle I want to show here. Uh, now you can pretty accurately you can move the steps down. Here you have the flat surface again. And here the steps continue again. Again, the building boom. I just delete it now because it's easier. I just want to show the proof of concept. Um, okay, here it's still wide, here it's narrow. Here we stop. I'm not going to do everything to the end. At this point, we add here a flat surface that we merge it. And here we say the definition of any place where you can move from A to B, it's called a highway. Don't ask me why it is, but that's how it is. It's just what we do. Uh, in this case, this is just a footway. And then you can say the sur surface, we can recognize the surface is concrete. Uh, we can see it's flat. so we can actually say incline, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, in this case, you can do this again, to get from A to B, it's called a highway, then these are steps, and we can actually count here, we can actually say that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, some steps are a bit wider, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty, thirty-one. So we can actually say here, step count, it's thirty-one. Um, from this imagery, you don't actually know if it's going up or down because you're looking from the top, but I actually know it's going down. So you can say it's going down. If you want, you can also do the percentages, but uh, for that you really need street view imagery. You need to actually look at it from the side and then you can see the angle which right now from drone imagery we don't see um, the road itself is a bit skewed so let's correct it a bit and then from the road to here that's actually not a footway so what you do is you say that's a footway but then define it's a footway namely it's just a link which then is also rendered different as you can see so any renderer of this information knows um, it's actually for the navigational software to work, like what Grab is using, or what other navigational software is using, TomTom Tom is also using that. They know now that from this road it's connected to these steps, but these aren't actually footways. This is not a footway, actually. It's just to make sure that the center of the road, which is used for navigation, from there, your navigator, if you select then the profile um, pedestrian, that you can actually navigate your pedestrian to these steps. Another way is to connect the steps directly to the road. That works also, but that's not accurate because the steps only go to here. Um, let's delete this for a moment. I'm going to show a bit more how mapping works and what you mappers can do. For example, these steps here. I'm going to do the same. This is incline up. Incline up. This is again highway steps. Uh, I can see the surface is concrete. And I can see on both sides there's handrails. So these are handrails and these are handrails. Here I can see there's no more handrails. Here is probably a water hose going. The water hose goes here. 
Um, there's also no handrails here, at least none that I can see. But these are handrails and these are handrails. So what you do now is, um, again, you say, footway, I already, no, no footway. Handrail, we say, yes, it has a handrail. And then we say, handrail in the center, no. Handrail left, yes. Handrail right, yes. Um, I know actually for a fact, because I know that place, um, that is metal, so you can actually say material is metal. You can actually say the color is green. We can see it's green. Uh, did I lift, lift out anything? Yeah. The color defines the steps. The steps are not green. So that's an arrow I made. You can actually do this. Handrail color is green. Like this. And now we define that this, these are steps. They are going up. Um, the should also be handrail. Hand rail material. The surface of the steps is concrete, and we can do a step count. We can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we can do the step count. That's eleven. Then we got these steps defined, and then from there to there. We can actually split that, we have to split that, and say again, this is the footway, and the footway is not a real footway, it's just a link, so the navigator can navigate it from there to there. But we can also do from there to there, and this is not very funny, we can actually say, this is a barrier and it's a handrail. And now we are actually in the process of defining the handrail. We can say the handrail, the height is, I know this again for a fact, it's one, two. Uh, we do everything in meters, we don't use American system. Then we know the material, and now I don't need to write handrail material, because this is actually referring to the handrail already. So I just say material, it's metal. And I can say, mm, what did I have? Oh, I had a color. I, again, I don't need to right hand rail anymore because this is related to the hand rail, it's green. Um, any more information you have, you can add it. You can also add information like survey date, and then we say, well, it's just 2023, but we can also be more specific. For example, if I know I was there yesterday, then the information I'm adding today relates to yesterday, which would then be 15, 11, 2003. Um, we can also add information source, then we can say that from drone, or the source is CEO, or the source is survey, uh, the source is Bing, whatever is your source, you can put it there as well. Um, the more information you get, the better of course. Um, this goes even further than that, this is actually allowing us that we can even mark here like that one and again I'm not going to do this completely I'm also not going to upload this later because it's uh, not what I'm working on usually I work from area to area so I actually have some logic in how I'm working and then we do it like this here you can see this is a little bit up, so we actually align the steps really with the road. And this is now an issue, you define this as an area, and then that's a highway, and the area highway is residential. You can define it as residential, if you sure, you can also do, what's that? Well, I actually know this is residential. So now you actually define the area itself. And again, you can add here the surface, it's concrete. You can add, I'm, I'm not going to do it now, you can add the source date, who did it, uh, who did the survey, where is the data coming from, in this case, drone imagery. Um, 
you can of course extend this further and further and further. Um, yeah, so these are manholes for the drainage. I'm not sure about that. So this is now another thing. If you're not sure about something, you can actually we have a whole OpenStreetMap wiki for it. Um, drainage. And this is then the helpful thing for the youth mappers. If they don't know what to do, you can actually go on a drainage. He doesn't find drain. Okay, then you can do it without drainage. Just drain. What way is it drain? You can actually go on a wiki and you can very quickly find information you need to know. This is the drain. Ditch, ditch, no other information. Okay, if I don't find it like that, then I look for examples usually. Gutter, So you can very quickly get, so this is man-made manhole, manhole is drain, inlet is great, that's basically what we're looking at. Um, this is then again what you can map very accurately, also from drone imagery, and that actually extends to here. Let's move it a bit up. The, the thing is, um, you can actually split it here, P, and we say we are going to delete this. Then we move this here so the edges match. As you can see, even drone imagery we need a little bit better. But in this case now, we're also splitting this. And now we're going to work with relations, so we're going to copy this, delete, add, and now we're going to do a relationship, and then we say that's a multi polygon, and then we copy the data of the street itself there, and then this one, we do another relationship. You don't need to do it as a relationship, you can add it as individual um, objects, as individual ways, as individual polygons, but the relationship is actually something which makes it, especially later on as more data comes on the map, it makes it easier to recognize things because if you have one line over the next line, over the next line, yeah, you can select it with the alt, uh, alt key, you can actually select from one line to the next to the next, the underlying lines, but by looking at it, you don't see they exist, right? So you have to click on it to actually figure it out. If you use relationships, you click on a line because there is only one line and it shows you immediately all the relationships. So it knows, it will tell you immediately it's related to the manhole, it's related to the road itself. So in this case, um, I'm going to use this information here because I usually don't map that. It's man made and it's a manhole. And the manhole itself is a drain and the inlet is great, that's a drain, and the inlet is great. The, the material is metal, the shape is via yeah, rectangle. Okay, material is metal, shape, oops, shape is a rectangle. So now we got that as a relationship, so now when you click on it, you actually see both relationships, it's not yet with description or anything, um, because I haven't added it that. Otherwise you also get the, the description. And that's another thing, you can do description here, anything. You can do, um, you can get it names, you can say who's the operator. Uh, you can even invent complete text, so if there's any information at the office which you wish 
to be on the database, you can actually do that. The main thing is um, you need to follow a certain convention to make sure that everyone understands it. So again, the data we work with, it's also used by companies like Grab, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, and a lot of data, if it's just for the city, they don't care about it, they don't touch it, they don't look at it, it's none of their concern. But some is of their concern. Um, now for grades and drains, of course, that's really a city thing. Um, but for example, this here, the street itself, which you met, the surface, if it's concrete or not, Grab is actually looking into that. They are navigating their riders and drivers. So they are actually interested in knowing the conditions. You can even add that here. You can even say the smoothness, and then you can say it's good, or it's bad, or it's medium. Anything you want to add to it. Um, again, also here, if you say the smoothness, well, it's bad, then you can actually add to that. Well, when was it bad? Well, the survey date was in, let's say today it's November. So we just add November. If I want to be more specific, I can say, well, I was there yesterday, so it's 15 November. If I cannot remember anymore, I just knew I was there two months ago, but I just had 2023. And then if that later on at the CEO or any other office, someone wants to know well, what is the condition of the street, how many kilometers of street we have in the city which have a bad smoothness. It, well, you can do this in QGIS. You can literally extract that information in QGIS. Um, I can show it in a different video. I'm not going to do this now. This is just about entering the data. Uh, but all of the data you enter, you can at any time, you can extract it in QGIS. Uh, also in Arcus, they also have a plugin for OpenStreetMap. And then you can filter. You can say, okay, uh, when, when what is on the roads which have a bad smoothness? And it's been reported uh, two years ago or four years ago. You can filter all that and within a second, push, it's there and you have that information. And every office can do that. Uh, all this information, I'm going to cancel this again. I'm going also to delete this because otherwise it screws up with all the other data I have been adding to another area because I'm working on drone imagery uh, near Long Long. And um, if I'm now going to add this, then you get jumps over the map where I'm working at. So I'm not going to add all of this. Um, yeah, but there's basically some examples of what you can do about infrastructure, drainage. Uh, under the road, we also map tunnels. We add waterways on the road, so you can say actually if a drain is in a tunnel, or if it's um, just covered by concrete, um, or if it's really a natural tunnel, uh, which we have at uh, City Camp which goes to one of the rivers. All of that you can map, and um, in this case, th this is done this simple thing. So if we got the youth mappers, and they sit in the techno labs at the university, they, and we host this at the MITD, they can actually here switch on these layers, where they see the drone images, uh, where all they have to do is just zoom into an area, this is another area, wait for it for a moment to load. Again, I have to, I have to really be clear about this, my laptop is not meant to uh, host this kind of information, it's hundreds, hundreds of petabyte of drone imagery and my laptop is seriously understaffed to power something like that. Now it's done. And as you can see, this is not an OpenStreetMap either. Um, until I got the drone images, I just got them last week. I did everything field surveying and just go there. That's the next step I'm going to get to. Um, make pictures, record it, make notes. And then I mapped based on, I'm going to disable this for a second, based on this. So this is Bing. Uh, no, this Microsoft, this is Bing. As you can see, yeah, you can see the path here, but you cannot recognize what it is. Also here, you see there's a path here, but are those steps? Is that concrete? Is that ground? I don't see that. 
So what I did now with the mapping, without the drone imagery, I just went there and stopped walking. I'm making photos, making notes on my phone. Then I came back home and then I used the notes and the photos to do the mapping. Uh, so this is really a huge improvement with the drone imagery. And now students, if they are in the tech labs, they don't need to do the field surveying anymore. They can just start mapping. There's a footway here, it's a path. Um, there are steps here. This is concrete, you can see it. This is just ground, you can see it. They can map the land use, so they can map not only here the buildings, you can actually map this is residential area, you can map this is a greenery area, this is grassy area, um, shrubbery, anything, the taxonomy, if, if you're into that, you can add that on OpenStreetMap, so then the city would even know how many shrubbery we have, what is the taxonomy, so what species is it, etc. All of that, you can map that on OpenStreetMap if, if you're into that, but obviously I'm just a single map for me, that's just too much. I, I do that for, for the fun. In the botanical garden, I recorded some data of that. Um, yeah, but this is really what I wanted to show that the beauty with the drone imagery. If we set this up in the techno app, and we get students who like to volunteer with that, who, who like to learn about uh, mapping, they learn a lot from it, you know. Um, Especially here, there, also here on the Wiki, uh, Wikimedia we set up for mapping. There is so much information here which I even didn't know. There's so much stuff I never heard about. There's so much words you learn, so much explanations, and the, the, the differences between objects in our environment that there's so many differences and uh, diversity in objects. So, what's a fire hydrant? Well, there's so many differences in that. That's also in the wiki. If you want to map fire hydrants, which you can also map uh, electrical poles of Beneco, the um, fiber internet, you can map the whole network here on OpenStreetMap. Um, there's actually some people doing that. But anyway, I think you get it, what, what we can do with mapping. It's so complicated and it's so much. Uh, I would need to run hours and hours and hours of videos to just explain all the basics. So this is just a few examples of the basics to get to all the basics. I'm not sure even if I could do it in a day. Now let's get to the other point, which I said, let's skip the drone imagery. I mentioned already earlier another problem with drone imagery, you know, no matter how much improvement this already is, but you don't see everything. You can see sometimes there's a gate, but what if it's not a gate? Some, some stuff is not that clear. Uh, this is where the street recordings come into play. This is Carta View. Carta View is supplied to us by Grab. Um, they do that for free, they support the mapping community and mostly also because it's of their interest, because they use OpenStreetMap themselves, uh, just like um, Meta, or better known as Facebook. They have a lot of tools, what they provide to the OpenStreetMap community, because also Facebook is using OpenStreetMap, so they are developing a lot of tools for us, they provide them for free for us. And um, these are recordings I made. And this is still a bit slow. So as you can see here in the lower right, this is what I made when I'm, when I'm riding the Jeep, I go in front, and then I just make recordings. I just have the phone, and I make a recording like this. And then it's uploaded to the Grab servers. The beauty of what Grab does is if there's any face, any private information, they filter that out. So there's no legal issues for us. But with this here, <clears throat> let's see if we have this together with a drone image somewhere to actually get to the point and then we disable the ping. Yeah, so here in Pinket we actually have drone images. This one here. 
So at this point, uh, this is an offset that happens. My phone is not that accurate. So when I upload it to Grab, it's not as accurate as the drone geopositioning here, which means it's sometimes a bit skewed. But at this point here, you can actually see this building here. And you can recognize the building here when you look at it. So this roof top here, that is this building. You can recognize that. And this building here is then on this side. It must be this or this building. No, this is the building. So what you see on the left is this darkish building, which is in the shadow of the taller building. Um, here you see the road going to the left, which is here. So the beauty of the street imagery, and again, this is also what the um, youth members can contribute to when you have students. Just take your phone, take a selfie stick, that's what I do, and you walk steps where the car cannot come. So government cars, they can actually install this in front of the car, make recordings, and you got recordings like this, and what you now got is a 3D perspective. It works in both directions, by the way. So you make in one direction the photo, and in the other direction photo. So then you're looking at an object from two angles, from the street, similar to what Google does, except the quality is a lot better. Um, while at the same time you have the drone imagery. So you see the building from above, but you can also see at the building from street view and you can actually pick any other picture. You can also browse through the street view. Um, so now you can recognize here this building is then this building. So now with the Jeep I moved a bit. Uh, now you can combine both the view from the street and from the drone from above, so you get a 3D picture. Another beautiful system is, if you get a 360 camera, I didn't buy it myself, they are very expensive, but if the city would provide that, put it on a car, any car of the CEO that drives through the city, and you get even the 360 degree camera in collaboration with the um, drones, and the youth members, they can then even start mapping, well, this building is two levels, this building is three level, this building is one level, this building is eight level. From the street, you can actually also see it's residential, there's a shop there, there's a commercial establishment there, there's a trench in there. All this information you can now combine, put it on the map. Uh, this is just another example of what youth members can do uh, for the city. And again, the, the concept is very clear to me. The more information the city has available, the better you can plan, the better you can structureize, the better you can govern. So this is also why good governance is about mapping. And um, yeah, there's so much more I need to tell, but I, I see I'm already at three quarters of an hour. So I'm going to stop the video recording here I'm sure there are many more questions, but I hope that this long video, much longer as I anticipated, uh, that it really shows a lot of examples of how youth members can contribute to the city. They can make street view recordings, they can have access to the drone imagery at the techno hubs, and then they, they can start mapping and just put info, give info on the map, anything, manhole, drainage system, establishments, transients, uh, residential houses, um, driveways, uh, areas where cars are parked, all of that information they can put on the, on the stream of literally anything you see, anything in the physical world, whatever it is, a PLDT, a fiber box, anything, you can put it there. Um, at this point I'm going to stop, I hope um, this helps explaining what what is my vision where where I think if you get a lot of volunteers in Bakio how we can digitalize this city so the city has all the information available it needs to have for good governance.